Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to my Friday Facebook Live car making tutorial. My name is Carolyn Benny, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Adelaide, South Australia. Welcome to you if you are joining me for the first time today, um, and for all of my return watchers, welcome back. I had last week away from you, which is always very sad for me, but um, I'm back here today. And I had some requests for Christmas cards. Now, um, I'm kind of feeling like two ways with Christmas cards. I love traditional colours for Christmas. Probably my favourites are like your white cards. I love white cards. Um, the silvers, all that kind of thing. But I was talking to my beautiful team of demonstrators when we went on our retreat recently and one of their big complaints here in Australia is that we don't have a lot of Australian Christmas cards to share that when they send their Christmas cards overseas everyone wants to see like a little piece of Australia on their Christmas cards and while we do have a really fabulous um, Santa in the new holidays catalog that's got a surfboard and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was fun to do something a little bit different, a little bit for a warm climate Christmas. So this is gonna be a bit different from all of you folk from the Northern Hemisphere that are going into winter for your Christmas. But here in Australia, it's lovely and warm at Christmas time. So I thought I would tune in to that vibe so good morning Lou thank you for sharing my video today hey Tony good evening good morning to you how are you um, let me share with you the Christmas card that we're going to be making and it doesn't really I suppose you, are you gonna I don't know you guys have to tell me whether it feels Christmassy enough for you or not it's not traditional but here it is it's using a fabulous set called making Christmas bright and this is it it is, it says, friends make the season shine. And it is very, very summery. It's beachy. And it's got lots of shimmer on it. I'm going to talk to you guys today about shimmer paint. Hey, Sherry, how are you? So this is, this is taking me to, we go camping at, um, at Christmas or at New Year's every year and we spend a lot of time on the beach with beautiful sunsets, um, warm nights, uh, cocktails and kids playing around campfires and that's kind of how I feel about Christmas and New Year's. That's how I experience it here and we've got some fabulous, um, we've got some fabulous sunsets here um, in Australia and in lots of other places too, I'm sure. But um, that's kind of how I feel about Christmas here. So this is a little bit different. Hey, Phyllis, how are you? You love it, Lou? Good. Well, I suppose, you know, you could use this kind of feel for other things as well. It's got like a bit of a um, beach wedding vibe that might be fun. Um, so anyway, let's play. And I want to show you because we're using a lot of fun tools today. We're going to use brayers. I know some of you are scared of the brayers. There's no reason to be scared of brayers. And we're also going to be using a beautiful new product. Hey, Catherine from Ontario, Canada. Hey, welcome, Canada. Um, so we're going to be using um, some frost white shimmer paint too. So shimmer paint is in the new holiday catalog. And I love it. Anything that shimmers is you know a love but let me show you um a couple of things first and then we'll get on to making our card so remember to keep sharing my video and invite other people to come and watch while i'm live because you can ask questions while i'm live which is which is fun to, i mean you can ask questions when i'm um when i'm not live and i will still answer them but it's you get instant response now right so anyways let me flip you guys over and we'll start making the card together. Bear with me while I organise myself. And let's see. A few weeks, so I always get a bit out of practice when I do that. 
Hey April from Iowa. Gosh, the, the North American contingent is strong today. You love the sunset. Of course you have great sunsets, Phyllis. I do not doubt it. Australian sunsets are awesome though. You've got to come and have a look for yourself. I promise you will not be disappointed. Okay, I'm just going to pop in my earbud and get sorted for a little bit of fun and crafting. Okay, so let me show you where um, where you find this in the catalogue. I'm just quickly finding you guys on my Facebook page as well. Okay, fabulous. You like the card? All right, let me let me zoom you in on the card so you can have a really good sticky beak before we get cracking. Okay. All right. So here is our card that we're going to make. It's I'm going to zoom you right in. Good morning, Shannon. How are you, sweet? Okay. So we've got lots of shimmer. Lots of shimmer. Can you see that? Is that picking up on the on the Facebook? You need to flip it. Oh, okay. Oops. I need to flip it. There we go. Thanks, Shannon. Okay, so there's lots, there's lots of shimmer. There is some, it's on shimmery white paper. So there's a little bit of a shimmer. Oh, we've got a new puppy, Shannon. Oh my goodness. That's all levels of excitement. It's, it's on shimmery white paper. So there's a little shimmer over it anyway in real life. I don't know whether you can spot that. Um, and I've also popped a few stars in here with a white gel pen. So it kind of has got a bit of a magical sea beach theme. What do you think? Is that fun? I hope so. I hope you enjoy making this one today with me. So let's hop to it. So I, um, I was actually driving with my son to uh, swimming practice last week and we saw the most beautiful sunset at night time with lots of dark sky coming in and it really sat in my mind so when I um, pulled out this stamp set to play with it's called Making Christmas Bright um, I, I just kind of got pulled back into that that idea of these um, these baubles oh, baubles they're not baubles fairy lights and this beautiful sunset kind of idea um, it's a beautiful stamp set and I think it's kind of fun you've got lots of different options with it it comes you can buy a coordinating punch now I haven't used the large Christmas lights I've just used this strand here and this great little um, sentiment here which I think is kind of um, makes it quite a modern beachy feel actually I was really pleased with the way that that kind of all tied in but there's lots of different components with this and you can make kind of very traditional um, cards with this as well so if you have a look I can show you the inside of the catalogue now because it's live you can actually start purchasing these things from our Christmas catalogue now for the last time I showed you I couldn't even show you inside the catalogue but now I can so here we've got the same stamp set used with very traditional colours um, we've got these beautiful Christmas bulbs we've got the greens and the reds and you can see you can really tie it in with Christmas colours I think one of the thing I like one of the things I truly like is punches I love punches and the fun thing about punches is when I look at punches I don't always see what um, they're originally created for like for this one I just see a footprint so I feel like I need to do something with a footprint for sure but then I also see like little puppy ears folded down with this punch I've just got lots of when I look at a punch I, I think of lots of different ideas of the way that I can use those punch shapes so and the great thing about punches is they're so easy to use they're so quick you can have them close by on your desk you don't need to even stand up if you're a lazy crafter like I am so um, it's great to have a coordinating stamp set and punch there's actually another coordinating stamp set towards the back for this one let me see if I can quickly find it so it's good that there's a couple of different 
options. Here's the other one, making every day bright. Um, so it's good you can use your punch for two different stamp sets and oh my goodness that is the cutest little penguin and a rabbit for Easter and a Halloween uh, where oh my goodness it's just too much there's too many coordinating cuteness with this particular set but let's get cracking onto our card today because I know that time's going to beat us otherwise but let me just um, tell you again it's called making Christmas bright it does come in a bundle as well as so you can bundle up the two pieces, the stamp and the um, um, stamp and the punch, and get them at ten percent off when you buy those two things together. And of course, you want to do that at my online shop if you're here in Australia, carolynbenning.com. Head on over to my blog, and you can start purchasing your goodies from there straight away today in your pajamas if you're not out of your pajamas yet. You can do that for sure. Okay, so let's have a little sticky beak. I've got a piece of cardstock here, and it is the shimmery white cardstock. I'm going to just trim it down a little bit because I did find that I liked a white border around it. Now this is an old Stampin' Up guillotine that we don't have in. We don't sell this anymore. It's very sad because it's one of my personal favourite. Stamping up things that we've ever had, but yes, yeah, so apologies about showing you something that we can't sell to you, which is sad. Um, okay, and I'm just going to trim this down to 10 centimeters by 14.4 because I just want a little bit of when I pop it down on the card front, I want a bit more of a border around it um, because I just thought that looked nice when I did it the other day when I made this yesterday. See here I've popped it on and there's a little white border all the way around. Just made it a little bit better I think. Tied it back to the white from the centre map. So I've got these big pieces of these huge post-it notes here. You don't need to go and find these huge post-it notes from your office shop but um, I find them really useful because I've got the sticky edge. Mind you I do try and use them do they like do they die because I, I like to use up all of my little paper products um, so they do there is music <laughs> it's kind of the stickiness is starting to fade away a little bit uh, okay let me just see right now I've got my grid paper and I'm always using my grid paper to measure and I'm coming in four little lines I don't know what that is that is it's two centimeters so I'm coming in I might actually come in three centimeters from the bottom of now I've said that I've got to actually measure it properly okay see I just see when I eyeball things things go a lot better and now I'm trying to do it properly because you guys are watching okay so I've just stuck the post-it note over there it's in three centimeters at least that's what I hope it is because I know you guys are going to ask yes three centimeters and I'm going to get out my sponge brayer so the sponge brayer comes with three two handles and four sponges and I've got them here I've actually kept everything so what you can do is you can kind of have like one sponge for each kind of color way um, but you can actually wash them out afterwards so don't get too worried if you've if you've used a particular color and you you know it's a once off you're not going to use that color very often because you can definitely wash them out they easily come off this little plastic handle there's a little piece on the inside and then you can just rinse this under some warm water warm slightly soapy water and give that a good rinse let it dry and then you can go on to another color next time okay but these are so that they're, they're really cheap good morning Mel how are you um, they're super cheap but they work really well they work better than the old rubber brayers that we used to have they're more forgiving I think um, and you don't have to be you know you don't have to practice so hard with these now I'm using blueberry bushel for the first color and the thing I like about blueberry bushel is everything 
love it. It's one of my favourite, favourite new colours. It's an in colour, so we've only got it for two years, but I would definitely put it on your wish list because it is such a fab colour. Um, blue is not all... Oh, no, that's not true. I do like blue, but I, I, I pretend I don't like it as much as pink, but probably I use it more than anything, really. So here we go. This isn't hard, is it? I'm just rolling. I'm starting off the page when I start rolling and just rolling it back and forth, right? Now, the thing with the braids is it's about building up colour. You've got to build up your depth of colour, which is a good thing because it can start off quite a light colour, but then just by rolling, you can build up the colour. And look how evenly it's going on. It's just, it just goes on so beautifully and evenly, these little sponge brayers. You think that they are, you know, they look really light when you get them. You go, oh, well, this isn't going to work properly, but they just work so well. So there we go. I'm just going to get that nice and dark. Definitely need to have some blotting paper underneath. And of course, I love our grid paper because you can do your measurements as well. And I've put a new piece of grid paper down for today's class, but seriously, this grid paper gets used until it completely dies. So that is our blueberry bushel. I have really applied a lot of ink, but that's what I wanted. I wanted it nice and dark. Now I'm digging out Knight of Navy. Now with the Knight of Navy, I'm not even going to change um, my little sponge brayer. I'm just going straight from the blueberry bushel because it's a lighter colour into the Night of Navy. Hey Carmen, how are you? Beautiful day in Tassie, Mel. It is a stunning day here in South Australia as well. We're lucky. I think spring has sprung. So I'm just going to roll that into the Night of Navy. Now this is our ocean okay so you've got to look back on our card here and this is our ocean but just around the edges here I want it to be a little bit darker because we want our focal point to kind of be the middle here this middle part of the sunset where you would be looking there's no real sun there like the sun has already dipped down past the ocean but we we want it to be darker around the outside and our focal point to be the middle okay so I'm just going to darken up the edges. So I'm going to come in on the corners on an angle with our Knight of Navy and darken up those edges. And you'll be surprised how good that looks when you've finished your cards. Now, what I would suggest is if you're going to be making these for Christmas cards, do batches. So have all of your card fronts cut and in a row and stick them, sometimes I just stick them straight onto my wooden craft table, but you could, you know, if you're not as, you know, messy as me, you wouldn't do that. But you could just, and then just do all of this section at one time. Okay, so doing batches of things just makes it work so much better. Okay, so can you see that I've got like, just come in and it's a little bit darker at the edges. And that's going to help train our eye to the middle um, of our card. Okay. All right. So that's that bit. Now I am going to add, I've got a sponge bray here. Now, can I say, this is a very messy card. Okay. You're going to get inky fingers. There is no two ways about it. But I'm going to put my sponge bray into the Knight of Navy. But that's crafting. You need to kind of get over getting messy. If you don't like to get messy, then crafting is not your thing. So I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness to the top here. And I'll show you why in a minute. Okay. All right. So I think that's good. Now I'm going to... Oh, this is the best bit. When you pull the mask off, that's the best bit. We all love that bit. Look at that. Such a crisp line. Look at that ocean. Isn't that so crisp? So good. But you know what I'm going to I'm going to probably uncrisp it in a minute because the ocean, when was the last time you looked at the ocean and it was that crisp? That doesn't happen in real life, does it? But anyway, let's move on to the next bit and then I'll show you how to make it look a little bit more realistic. 
So um, now I've got another piece of our humongous post-it note and I'm going to stick that here. I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of blue. Uh, it can be even be a little bit more. So just going to leave a little bit of blue. So it, I'll show you that nice and close so you can see exactly what I've done. Um, because it's, you don't want a gap. So you see how you can see just a tiny edge of blue poking through. You don't want it to be like ocean, ocean, and then a little bit of white, and then sunset. You want it to blend in to one another, okay? So let me show you how I'm going to do the sunset. So this is Flirty Flamingo. It's a fabulous colour. And let me ink that up. Now, can you see when I'm inking that I'm staying all on the ink pad? I'm doing little rolls and I'm not going off the edge. That way there's not going to be a line of ink where you go off the edge and you leave a line on the brayer. That used to be really the tricky part when with uh, rubber brayers. Who has, still has a rubber brayer that they use? If you went off the edge it would leave a line mark on the brayer and that would be almost impossible to get off your cardstock. These are a lot more forgiving. The, the um, goodness I've moved that. The Foam brayers that are more forgiving, but still, you still, if you possibly can, want to stay on the ink. Okay, starting off the ink pad, uh, big pun, starting off the cardstock, always start off the cardstock. That way it doesn't start with a line in the middle of your work. And we just want to add some, mostly it's right at the base that we want to add the colour and kind of as it works its way up. We won't, we won't make it so dark because we want to blend. Hey, Kerry, how are you? You missed the start. That's okay. You can catch up. Okay, so we've got a nice... Oh, I love that colour. That colour makes me feel like it's not too soon to have a pina colada. Hey, Teresa, how are you? Nice to see you. It's not... Look, it's got to be... It's, look, it's it's... Certainly time to have a pina colada in North America, isn't it? You know, I could do that. It's, it's, it's 10 o'clock in the morning here, so maybe it's a little early here. Not to worry. Okay, so I'm going to take off my sponge. And I'm going to flip to one I can use, a light blue. So here, that's the beauty of having four in a packet. That, you know, usually you don't use more than four at a time. Okay, so I'm going to pull out Balmy Blue, which is another one of Stampin' Up's newer colours, but it's a, it's a good go-to one already. I've heard, I know that my team are loving Balmy Blue. Okay, I've got lots of colour. Starting off the page again, and really, now this is where we're going to blend like crazy people. Lots of colour. Oh, oh. Jimmy Crickets. That's doesn't want to. Lots of colour, lots of blending. We want that skyscape, skyscape, sky escape, skyscape to look as natural as possible. Now you will find that your fingers. You have to be super careful with your fingers because otherwise the ink just seems to travel in all the places you don't want it to go. How's that looking? It's kind of looking, it's looking like a sunset. Do you think it's looking like a sunset? I think, I think it is. I think that we're winning. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pop this post-it note aside. So we've got our different layers there of colour. I'm going to bring back in the balmy blue just to add a little bit of our nighttime feel now, okay. Um, do you know what? Yeah, let's do that. I, I did yesterday add a little bit of Bahama, Bermuda, Bahama, gosh, I am in a tropical place, um, Bermuda Bay. So I'm going to do that again just because, let me just add a little bit extra. No, no, it still didn't make much difference. I think I could have left it out. Okay, so let's just stick to 
um, balmy blue. All right, now I'm going to back to our blueberry bushel. Now let's, again, concentrating on my edges first because I want them to be kind of like corners. And then let's bring in that dark night sky. I don't want it to be as dark as the ocean, but I want it to be dark. So I'm going to bring that down on the sides like so. Really nice and dark at the top. We want to be able to see our stars. This is, it's, it's kind of more arty than our normal stamping. I want to bring that down so it doesn't look quite so... I don't know the word I'm trying to say. I want it to look more natural. That's it. More natural. Blending. I've just changed over to my lighter sponge and I'm going to blend. Blend, blend, blend. Okay, what do we think? Are you liking this so far, guys? You're so quiet today. Hey, Vicky, how are you? What do you think? Have you guys tried um, using your brayers much? Tell me, what's been your experience with brayers? Okay. Now, let's have a look at how I get... So if you can see here, this line is very crisp. And I just don't think that's kind of, that's a really a natural feel um, for the ocean. I don't think the ocean is quite that crisp. Not all the time anyway. So um, I like to get this poor old briar, this poor old sponge dauber. It is used and abused. Um, I like to get my sponge dauber. I've got... It's been in the white, so I'm just going to rub it off. I've been on the blue. Rub it off on my... And then into the White Craft ink. Oh, Vicky, you're interested in seeing what I'm doing? Yes, because you didn't see the beginning, so you have no clue. It's fun, isn't it? That's kind of a fun way of coming in. So I'm just going to... I've been... I've put it in um, my White Craft. And I'm just going to lightly... Go over the top of that line just to soften it a little bit with the white. And then I'm going to bring it down like the sun has kind of fallen on the ocean there to lighten up that little bit as well. I might even bring, that's the, bl the dark blue brayer and go over the edge a little bit there as well. Just some shadows. I think I might like a little bit more white on the ocean. Again, what this is doing is bringing our focal point right to that sunset in the middle. We're darkening the edges. We're really leading the eye in to the middle there. Okay, let's get doing some stamping with our fabulous stamp set here. So we are playing with the Stampin' Up! Making Christmas Bright stamp set. And we're using this line here of beautiful little fairy lights. This is our Christmas in Australia, Christmas in the hot in the tropics. Um, goodness me. And um, I'm hoping that you like it. <laughs> okay, I can see. Now, I'm just going to use some Memento ink. I've just popped the um, stamp on a block today. I'm not using my Stamparatus today. I'm using a block. And I'm going to start with the... I'm going to flip this over because that colour underneath is super distracting. Is it distracting for you guys? There you go. You'll be able to see what I'm doing better now. Okay. So I've inked up my stamp. I want it nice and black because it's got to show up against the colour in the background. Okay, so I want a nice stamp. 
there. Like so. Now the good part about this stamp is that it kind of ends in a way that you can marry them up, which I think is fun, without too much of a issue. Now I might link it up again. I'm going to turn it upside down. And that one, like so. I think three is a good amount. So, and one more strand. And I want that strand to still be above the waterline, so I'm going to try and look through my lights and my stamp. The good thing about photopolymer is that you can look through to see where you're stamping. And each time I've done this, it's looked a little bit different, so bear that in mind. Let's have a look this way. Ah, that's the perfect way. Okay, there we go. There's our cute little light bulbs across the page. Now, let's get into this shimmer paint. So I want to share with you about that. So the shimmer paint is in the Christmas catalog. I should have found out where it is um, because I haven't tagged that page and um, someone might know which page. It comes in, there's actually a few different, let me see if I can find it. Um, there's a few different colour shimmer colours, but I started off with the frost white. No, I can't find it, but I think there is a gold and I think there is a silver as well. Um, but I'll put that link up on my blog um, this evening so you can see all the other ones that you can purchase. But this is the shimmer paint. So you can use it in a few different ways. So the way I'm using it today is I've just actually got an empty aqua painter and I'm going to dab it on and paint with it. You can also do it in a few other different ways as well. So I just wanted to quickly touch base on how you do that. It's got a little ball bearing in it so you can give it like a little... Um, you need to mix it up because it's got all the pigments inside of it and you can just paint with it but you can also mix it with isocol rubbing alcohol so any rubbing alcohol um, this is the one that's readily available in I think supermarkets here and your chemist that kind of thing you can pop some rubbing alcohol and a few drips of the shimmer paint in one of these cute little squirty bottles and you can use it as a spray that's not what I'm doing today, but I thought I would just show you how that looks. So if you use it with the alcohol, it dilutes it and it creates this fabulous all over shimmer spray. Now, because you're using the rubbing alcohol, it goes on quite wet, but it dries quite quickly. So that is beautiful. It's, um, it's really a lovely, well, it's lovely any time of the year, but for your Christmas cards, that's lots of fun. What I would suggest that you do is you get like a an old cardboard box and kind of make a spray paint place for it. Like, you know, where you, you pop your card in and you have it in this box and you can do some spray painting in there with your shimmer paint because it does tend to go kind of everywhere that spray if you don't if you want to restrict your shimmering to one area then perhaps do <laughs> use that shoe box or use that box as a bit of a spray zone but um, you will love playing with that so that's just um, that is the frost white version of the shimmer paint do you like shimmer paint yes it's so good we used yes we used to have it didn't we Mel and I was so sad when we let it go, and so they bought it back, which I'm really pleased about. And I intend to get all the colours, but I've started off with this one. So that's one version. So Isocol, and that was just a few drops in there, and it makes quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, you'll, be, you'll get lots with that. You can also stamp in it. So if you put some of this on one of our blocks, and then you could just stamp directly 
onto it and stamp onto your page and stamp shimmer paint like um, like ink, regular ink. So um, there's lots of different ways that you can use shimmer paint. We're going to use it in a really simple fashion today so you don't even need to panic about it. I've got this dry aqua paint. You could just use a paintbrush but this was on my desk and I just kind of, that's just the way I roll. You know I'm lazy. If it's on my desk that's the way I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to keep, I want these little light bulbs to look a little bit bright and kind of magical against the sunset. Now I don't want to put too much of this shimmer paint on because I want to keep that black line and because it is an opaque paint it will go over the black and you will lose your black lines. So let me bring you closer so you can see. You can see that coming in, don't you? Yeah? So that's... You're looking forward to trying it? The spray? Yeah. It's so much fun. And I could have done a little bit of spray on this too, I suppose. But I wanted it to really... I wanted these light globes to stand out against this night sky which is just so pretty. So I'm trying to be quick so you don't get bored, but I'm also trying not to wreck it. It's quite cathartic when you're, when you're not rushing. <laughs> okay, so let's see down here. Now there's a few loop the loops that I'm having to avoid because I don't want to colour those in because they're not actually the light globes. They're just the fairy lights being looped the loop. So let's pop that nearly there and this is I'm just dipping into the lid so I've just got a little bit in there gosh you'd take you forever to use it all up this way I suppose you could do it in different ways but you you know the, the bottles are tiny but you're only going to use up a little bit this way so what do you think Kind of fun, don't you think? Yeah? Oh, thanks, Lou. Thanks for my love hearts. Okay, so now I've got a question for you. Do you think I should leave it like so? Or do you think I should put some shimmer around the lights so that it looks like the lights are kind of, um, you know, radiating some light? So tell me. Um, let's have a let's say love hearts if you push your little love heart emoji love hearts if you want the shimmer on the outside of the lights and smiley faces if you want me to leave the lights just like so so go so we want love hearts for the lights being kind of shimmery and just and smiley faces for leaving them like so let me see Lots of smiley faces, a couple of love hearts. Hmm. I feel like the smiley faces, oh, and one sad face. <laughs> the smiley faces are winning. Okay, well, I'll hear you. All right, smiley faces. We'll leave them as so. Let me show you on here just one. I one. So if you wanted to do that, um, all I've done is just gently gone around the outside and tried to stay off of the lines when I when I did that. So just a little bit of shimmering around the outside like so. So we'll leave one like that. My husband said like that as well. I don't ask him many questions about craft, but he agreed with the smiley face. <laughs> All right. The thing that you want to go and do now if you um, is to let that dry a little bit. We don't have the time to let that dry a little bit. So we're going to go push straight on and hope that I don't ruin the card. So I've got my uh, Stamparatus in and I'm going to pop a little sentiment on the bottom. I was unsure about what sentiment would work with this card to start with but actually there's some really great sentiments on the stamp set that go beautifully with the lights of course stamping up tie all that in this one friends make the season shine I think that's so lovely um, 
and so true. And then there's um, may your Christmas be, and you could add the bright, or you could um, you know use that on the there's words on this these light globes. Making spirits bright is another one. So they all tie in really beautifully with our stamp set. But the thing that I loved about our card, the thing that I loved about this sentiment was how modern it felt. It felt like something that would be on a um, like a surf a surf brand or a, a, quite a modern card um, feel about it. So I did like that because I think the card is quite modern. It's um, it's kind of a modern feel about it, a young feel about it. I don't know why I'm doing it then because you know time is marching on here but anyway it does feel like a young feel about this card so I've got my I've lined up my little um did you see how I did that I lined up the stamp first then swung over the door to collect it now I've got my embossing buddy and I'm just going to pop a little because we've added so much ink it's be easy for embossing powder to stick to that amount of ink that we've added to this paper so now I've popped my little embossing powder, embossing buddy powder, and I'm just going to swing that out so you can see what I'm doing. So <clears throat> I'm adding my Versamark to my stamp. I'll stamp that one down like so. Perfect. Now let's swing that down. Hey Carol, how are you? Fabulous. Oh, thank you. I've got white embossing powder and I played around and I think I like the white the most and I'll show you why. Okay. Ah, give, now this is this is something that's gonna happen to you. So, you know, this is real life. It happens to me too. See how I added that? Um, I added the embossing buddy, but I didn't go up high enough. And it's collected, because there was so much ink that I've added to this card, it's collected to all the places that <clears throat> it shouldn't. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flick that back in. I'm going to do it again. And that is the beauty of having the Stamparatus, right? Okay. So what I've done is it was a mess. Okay. So I've flicked, I've used my brush and I've flicked that back into my little tub. And I've gone back over with my embossing buddy and added more of our magic dust. Now I'm going to pop that back into the Stamparatus and this is the benefit of having a positioning tool that if you stuff up, if you make a mess, you can fix it. So I'm just going to add more Versamark and I'm going to swing it back over. Look at that. It's going to be fabulous. Now, let's see. It will pick up all the spots. Okay, that's great. Now that looks so much better. Okay, let's heat gun that and get that sorted. Got my heat gun here. I've got it close to my table. I think with embossing, it's so important that you have all of your bits and pieces close to you. Um, otherwise, you'll just never use embossing stuff. If it's, if you, well, maybe you're not lazy like me, but if you've packed it all away, you're not going to pull it out. But if you have your embossing powder close by, you have your heat gun close by. I used to turn it off and, and put it, uh, unplug it when the boys were little, but now I leave it plugged in. They know better. Nice and crisp. Okay. Beautiful. All right, so it, I'm just going to let that, 
oh, you see how it's all a bit crinkled let me just add some heat on the bottom and uncrinkle it a little bit there we go that can happen that's okay we can fix that all right so there we've got our embossing buddy has left lots of white everywhere that has now dried but you can get your tissue and just go over to get that embossing powder off okay so let me see what else we need to do all right let's pop it on a card base I've used my thick white cardstock in A4 I've sliced it into two and I've put our crease mark in our fold now can you see why I've added let me take this away can you see why I left a little piece around a border around the outside because that white crispness really ties back in with this white sentiment which I love I'm using my multi-purpose liquid glue and because it was a little bit bent in the middle of this car because of the heat gun I'm actually using more glue than what I would normal normally to make sure that it sticks down nice and flat and once I finish making it I'll pop it under my craft mat for a few minutes as well and that will straighten it out nicely the thing I love about multi-purpose liquid glue is it gives you a couple of seconds to position and then once those couple of seconds are up and you've finished positioning, that's it. Your card is never going to come apart. You can, you can pull it apart, but you'll break it. That's um, the beauty of the liquid glue. A couple of seconds to make it to, for it to, um, for movement, for positioning, and then it is stuck like concrete. Okay, I've got my white gel pen. You could also use a white pencil if you wanted to as well. It looks pretty. It does look pretty, doesn't it? Looks so pretty. And kind of glamorous. Looks like a tropical beach. Okay, I've got my white gel pen. And I'm just going to add some stars. Because I want it to be kind of a magical, starry feel. Now, we don't sell white gel pens anymore. We used to, but you can just get them from your local um, news agency or craft shop. So I'm, I generally do things in threes because I kind of find it pleasing to the eye, but then you kind of have to add random ones in too, especially in the dark spots, I think that's looks nice and the light and the little stars are just coming gently down but not too far okay makes you want to go on another cruise oh doesn't that look like something you'd see on a cruise yeah so what do you think Christmas card beachy Christmas card is that something that would <laughs> would work for you um, here's another version of the card that I made using a different sentiment. So this is still from the same stamp set, but it's the Making Spirits Bright. Um, I've used silver embossing for that one there, and that's with a little bit more shimmer around it too. I'll bring this one back in so you can kind of see that's the, the difference there. Um, the other thing... What's I going to say? I've lost my train of thought. Oh yes, the other thing, if you find that your any of your little baubles have kind of like lost the glow is it's gone over the top of the black, you can use our fabulous um, black journaling pens to kind of go back over and add that uh, line back in. So if that's something that makes you happy. To do that so there you go that is our beachy Christmas card um, and you know that makes me happy I think that kind of is that's Christmas here in Australia um, and I hope that you even enjoy it. you can practice with those briar techniques a little bit as well and get them um, to your liking let me 
Over. Ah. Okay. Okay. There we are. That was it. That was our crafting for today with our shimmery, beachy, Christmas summer Christmas card I hope you enjoyed that remember that we've um, all of your Christmas card making needs can be taken care of in the new Christmas stamp up holiday catalog um, swing by my shop carolinebenny.com at my blog and um, this afternoon I'll put up photos of this card as well as all of the products and you can just click on the little links and go purchase them if you want to start making your Christmas cards or um, just start playing soon. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Now next week I'm, uh, I've got some work out of the home for the next couple of weeks so I will be juggling my Stampin' Up! Um, Facebooking and working so I can't pinpoint the exact time I'm going to be with you next week but I'm definitely going to try and work in um, another tutorial next week it might be Friday afternoon if I can swing it um, or an evening next week but um, I'll be back next week and I look forward to spending some more time with you guys have a fabulous weekend and happy crafting to you